and hello and welcome into views from the sidelines. May the fourth be with you, Malik. I'm your host, Joey Tysig, my partner, Malik Hill. It's May 4th. Some people like to call it Star Wars Day. For us, it's draft recap day. Uh, the NFL draft is over. Everything's been said and done. We'll go over some winners and some losers. NBA playoff update. Um, and then we have a couple quick little tidbits in college basketball that we'll we'll touch on in a minute. Um, but Malik, did you enjoy the draft? How much did you watch of it? I watched up until I think like the first few picks of the sixth round. Wow. There, mo- uh, there are a lot of years where I watched it all. Mm-hmm. This year, I was like, I'm not, I'm not going sicko mode this year. I'm just gonna, I'm, I'm gonna cut off going into the sixth. Yeah, yeah. I, there were a lot of players that I, I, just, I didn't care that much at that point. Mm-hmm. Although there, there are bound to be a few gems in the sixth and seventh round. I, I recapped once it was done. Yeah, that, that's kind of what I did. I mostly watched day one and two. Um, got all the important stuff out of the way. Got to see the Lions, uh, for a while. And then after that, I kind of just checked in every once in a while, um, and saw who was taken, who wasn't. Um, so we'll get to that in just a minute. We'll do a whole recap, talk about the Lions and everything. Um, but I did want to bring up, there's been a couple transfer portal news in college basketball to bring up. Um, Julius Marble is transferring to Texas A&M. So we kind of figured that you know, this would happen, that he was going to move on. It just it just seemed like he wasn't fitting. And, yeah. So, we'll see how he does there. I don't know. Hard to say. Um, Malik has informed me that Michigan got a guard from Princeton. Yes. Uh, what's it? Jalen Llewellyn? Jalen Llewellyn. Yeah, he's probably the best point guard in the Ivy League. Mm-hmm. Going to the Ivy League again. And, honestly, one of the best in the country overall. He just has overall game, good point guard, good offensive player. Yeah. And because of him transferring in, Frankie Collins has decided to transfer out. So it will be another situation with a transfer point guard starting mm-hmm. and a freshman backing him up. Yeah. That's unfortunate news for me. I was really enjoying Frankie Collins' game in the tournament, but um, hopefully he can get on a team and have some success. Yeah. Uh, the last... I'll be surprised if he doesn't go back to the West Coast. Yeah. The last one that I wanted to bring up is – Kind of the drama queen king himself, Amani Bates. We already had touched on that he's leaving. Uh, he's now gotten to his final six, which is kind of what he did back in high school. Um, I believe it's, what, Arkansas, Michigan of all teams, Seton Hall, Louisville. I think he threw, like, he, I think he, threw, he threw Eastern in there. Listen. Yes, Eastern Michigan. Yeah, he's that was he's not going to Arkansas. They just had the top one of the top transfer classes and one of the top recruiting classes. Yeah. He won't fit in at Arkansas. I'm oh, DePaul. Okay. He yeah. ain't going to DePaul. Hey, it, there might be a chance if they throw the big bag. Maybe. But I am terrified that he might come to Michigan, even though he's he's so talented. Just so he can he play still against is. Michigan State. But yeah. I, I don't even know if Jawan can rein him in. Mm-hmm. Like, I, I'm, I'm so afraid if he comes here. <sighs> I I don't know. I just don't know. I don't know where he fits. That's yeah. the thing. I I do not know where he fits. Right. Yeah, I I don't know and either. How he and how he takes coaching. Yeah, he is going to be an interesting one to watch. Obviously, he's got the talent. It's just if he can rein in whatever's going on in the background. I I think that's kind of the biggest part. But we'll see. Kind of interesting news. He's I guess he's got it down to 6, so yeah, thought I'd just throw those little college basketball updates. They are pertaining to these local teams. I will support him if he comes to Michigan, but I'll be on the edge of my seat every week. I will be hypercritical if he comes to Michigan. <laughs> so just be prepared. <sighs> be prepared. All right, let's get into the NFL draft. Uh, I think it was like one of the most exciting drafts in a long time. That for first me. round is the most is the most wild. Yeah, opening round of a draft, and and not even just for the Lions. Obviously, we'll get into it. The Lions did some crazy things, but just overall, like trades, and it, it just goes along with this whole off season that the NFL has gone through. And I think it makes I think it makes things super exciting for fans. Um, I, again, for people that are more traditionalists, it's tough because you see all these guys already swapping teams, uh, just as often as they do in basketball now. It seems like so. 
that part's hard, but it's it's fun from sitting back as fans, just watching the draft and not knowing who's gonna get this next pick. Is there gonna be a trade? Who they're gonna pick? Things like that. Like, I think that was the most exciting thing. So let's just go through the top ten real quick. Um, just recap, and then we'll do more of specifics of winners and losers. So number one overall, no surprise, was Trayvon Walker. It still was somewhat of a surprise. A little, yeah. Once it happened, people were like, okay, it happened. But, like, right, people still admitted, like, this is a big risk. Yes, yes. So we got that in our mock draft correctly. Um, then the Lions were up at two. They got yelled at by the NFL for turning in their pick too fast. Once again, actually, because they did that last year with Penny Sewell. And they, as soon as I saw... Lines are on the clock. Lions pick is in. I knew it was Aiden Hutchinson. And to me, as we said before, only slightly disappointing. Uh, they did go the safe route, but they got a great player. Hope he works out. Just wouldn't have been my pick. Yeah, I, I went Kayvon for the higher ceiling, but right. Aiden Hutchinson probably has the highest floor of all of them. Yeah. He, you know, we hope at least, but we, we know he's a really good player. Right. And that you're, you're going to get consistent, really good play from him. Mm -hmm. Yeah. And with him staying home, hopefully that gives him more motivation to play hard. Yeah. And it, it should be stable, too. Yeah. With Kayvon Thibodeau, even though I I don't buy into all the character problems. Right. There is a chance there could be some up and down. There could be some instability a little, mm -hmm. maybe. So, Aiden, I, you know you're not going to get trouble on Aiden Hutchinson. Yeah. And then at number three, Houston Texans went with Derek Stingley Jr., the guy that's been kind of bounced all over the board. Early mocks last year had him really early this high. And then throughout the season, like, he started dropping again. And people were talking about Sauce Gardner. So, Derek Stingley Jr. going at three. A little bit of a surprise, but kind of the days leading up to the draft was starting to become more and more like it was going to be a thing. Uh, then number four, Jets. Who did, who did you take at three in our mock? Uh, I took Aiden Hutchinson because you took yeah, yeah, Kayvon. Yeah. So I, I was in the the boat of get those top three guys. I felt like those three guys were kind of the guys to have. Um, then we got this pick right. Sauce Gardner going number four to the Jets. Just made sense. In our minds, he was the best cornerback available. Um, but, yeah. Kayvon Thibodeau going to five uh, for the Giants. I think that was a great, great pick for them. That's not what we had. We had them taking a Kwanu. But, I mean, they ended up doing all right. Yeah. And people, there are a lot of people thinking Kayvon Thibodeau could drop even further. So, yeah, I guess it's not a surprise he went in the middle of the top ten. Right. I just figured that at five that they would have taken one of the tackles at five um, just in case um, they weren't able to, I don't know. They, they ended up playing it perfectly. Yeah, and it worked out. So then uh, at six, Carolina, thank goodness, did not take Malik Willis. They get they get Icky Ikwanu, and then at seven, the Giants got their tackle. They took Evan Neal. Felt like that was a great draft for them. Mm. Eight, we saw the first wide receiver go, Drake London, to Atlanta. Then at nine, we got this pick right, Charles Cross, to Seattle. And at 10, Garrett Wilson to the Jets. We pretty much knew those receivers were going to be pretty much interchangeable, so we got the idea right there. Um, yeah, I, I'm, I'm still surprised one of those teams wasn't dumb enough to take Malik Willis. Yeah. A team usually takes the bait, mm -hmm. but the restraint on quarterbacks this year was pretty crazy. Yes, mo much more logical than I ever expected. Yeah, this was the most logical quarterback draft I, I think I've ever seen. Mm -hmm. Yeah, uh, at twenty, the only quarterback taken, small hands Kenny Pickett. Why do you got to call him small hands? I, you know, I just small think hands Pickett. I just think it's funny that people like bring it up all the time. I'm I don't necessarily care. I don't either. He, people also, it, it's strange to me. I saw some people bring up, oh, he's got small hands. I'm worried about him and the weather. Do people not know he played at Pitt? Yeah. He played at Pitt in that, like, mm -hmm. 
how do you bring that up with the weather when he played? Right. Literally. This is where he played. <laughs> yeah. He's staying in the same area. He's in the same spot. So I don't yeah, I don't get it either. <laughs> um to me, it is like sweet, sweet justice that last year around I mean a little bit later, more towards the fall of last year, Malik was a Kenny Pickett hater and said I was. all these yes. terrible things about but this. But I had man. good reason. <laughs> After, not, after four years, what was he, Joey? I'm not denying it. I just think it's <laughs> I just think it's yeah. hilarious. It's it is funny that he was the main person mm-hmm. where I was like, do not no. Do not I'm not a fan him. of Kenny Pickett. Don't buy him. Pitt will be average because he's average. Had a great season. Yeah. Team had a great season. First quarterback drafted. And he goes to one of Malik's favorite teams, the Steelers. Former favorite well, team. Yeah. But former. Well, he mm-hmm. yeah. He became Superman out of nowhere. Yeah. Congratulations. He gets to keep wearing the cape. Stay in his hometown. Yes. So for the Steelers. Meanwhile, uh, that whole quarterback situation was very interesting because the next quarterback that we saw off the board was in round three. And it was not Malik Willis. It was Desmond Ritter to Atlanta at pick 74. What do you think about that fit? I honestly, with Arthur Smith, I think there's a good chance for him to succeed. Now, the fact that that roster is so just kind of depleted right now and they're rebuilding for the most part and you don't have Calvin Ridley, he's out because of that betting scandal. There's a lot of putting together pieces randomly that they're going to have to do. Mm-hmm. They also they just released Mike Davis yesterday. Yep. And they drafted uh, Tyler Algier from BYU, so he might be the main back. Yeah, it's it's a lot of it's in a lot of new faces, right? A Cordell, lot of yeah. Cordell Patterson is, I mean, he's over thirty at this point. So. Exactly, a lot of putting new pieces together, and with Marcus Mariota and Desmond Ritter, what is Kyle Pitts' production going to be this year? Like, it could be a dip in production. Kyle Pitts, I mean, uh, Desmond Ritter or Marcus Mariota could have a really good year. I have no idea what to expect. Yeah, yeah, it's a good fit with the coach. They're going to get creative with them, but I don't know in, ter- in terms of team. It could it could take a while. Yep. It, it probably will take a while. And then the big – one of the big drops of the draft, Malik Willis, did end up getting drafted in that third round. Overall, 86th to Tennessee of all teams. Do you do we just blame the media completely for everything they've done? I believe to so. To try and force teams to take Malik Willis top five. I, I think so. But at the same time, there's a lot of people that were really surprised that teams did not, like you said, did not jump um, on quarterback. They knew that this draft was not great for quarterbacks. Now, if these guys could turn out to have good careers. Malik Willis has just as good chance as anybody to actually do something. I mean, we've seen guys like Russell Wilson go in the third round, and you know we know his career. Dak Prescott went fourth. Right. So there's always that guy that it could happen, but you're not willing to take in the first round. Like, they're not guys that stood out necessarily. And so, you know, it's interesting, I think, too, that he goes to Tennessee because that just tells you that Tennessee is kind of – The clock is on, Ryan. Yeah, they are – clock is on. They are looking like, you know, we've made it – like, we made it the number one seed last year, didn't get out. They've made the playoffs the last couple of years, and they've been a solid team, and they just can't figure it out. They can't get over the hump. The Rams couldn't get over the hump. They traded away Jared Goff and got over the hump. Tennessee might be looking at that now. Yeah, it's it's also – it's not looking good after hearing what Ryan Tannehill said. They asked him about how – if he if he would help and how he would help Malik Willis, and he said it's not my job to mentor him or teach him about the game. Yeah. It isn't his job. He's not wrong about that. Yeah. But a really good leader takes that responsibility. Right. Even if your job is on the line and you have a short amount of time to get this done, mm-hmm. the best of all time and the guys that are the best leaders in the game, they take it upon themselves to help the young guys, even if it's someone in your position. Yeah. So I I don't know if Tannehill is paranoid. I don't know. if maybe Maybe he is just like, you know, it's not my job. Mm -hmm. The coaches will do it, and I'm sure me and him will get along fine. 
Right. Kind of like how Aaron Rodgers was when they drafted. Uh, well, it, yeah. it, like Brett Favre with Aaron Rodgers. Like you, yeah. you he know said, he said, did. I'm not retiring anytime soon. Right. So like it, it's it's happened in the past. I, I think it's just it depends on the guy that you have. Some guys they embrace that they want to teach the younger guys, you know, maybe what they weren't taught or something like that. But I think Tannehill. I think he's a little different because of the way that he came into the league. Like, he was pretty highly touted, didn't work out in uh, Miami, kind of had to work himself back into the league's favor. And so I think just in that sense, he might be just, like, very strong-minded that, you know, he had to work to get to where he's at. He's not going to ease that for anybody else, Like I guess. I don't know. I can't speak for him, obviously, but that's just my thought, maybe. Um, yeah, it's kind of a weird situation. I don't. I don't really care. I don't think either way. Um, I I like it from Malik Willis, honestly. The fact that he gets to sit. The fact that they also drafted Hassan Haskins, mm-hmm. who could be whenever Derrick Henry needs a break, he can come in and do as much damage. Yeah. Not not as much damage. He can do damage. I mean, we and, saw guys yeah. like Deonta Foreman come in last year, and he actually did in numbers wise just about as good as Derrick Henry does. Yeah. So. Yeah, it's a good offense to be in for a running back. And a really good O-line, too. So Yeah. All right, let's let's uh, let's just get into the Lions before we get into some more uh, different teams. Obviously, we said Aiden Hutchinson, number two. We've kind of talked about him a good deal. Uh, more of a safer pick, but very solid. You know, I don't, like I said, I didn't think that you could go wrong with those top three guys, really in the draft for the most part. Um, maybe Trayvon Walker, depending on your opinion. But then, at number 12, the Lions decided they were going to get frisky. And they traded up. They traded their 32nd and their 34th pick, along with, what was it, a 6th round pick? Or, no, they traded their 4th round pick. Yeah, they traded the 4th. 32, 34, and then their 4th round pick. So... They go up to 12. At the time, I wasn't happy that they traded both 32 and 34. Yeah. But it worked out. So they move up to 12. They give up 32 and 34, but they keep uh, 46. 46. Um, so they technically they moved up in the second round. Um, while get, So basically, they gave up 12 for 32, so they move up 20 spots. They gave up 34, and then they took... 46 from the Vikings, which their original second round was like 66 or something like like I was saying. So they move up another 20 spots there. So for the most part, they get two picks that are moved up and they only lose 34. And now that I've thought about that over, you know, this past week or so, that's a really good deal. And I'm like you, the night of, I was like, oh. We gave up 32 and 34. That seems like a lot because those were the kind of the picks that I was most excited for yeah. because you could go wide receiver and a defense there. And the Lions come up roaring, no pun intended, uh, to number 12. And now everybody on coverage is talking about, is this Malik Willis? And I panicked. I immediately <laughs> panicked. I, I was watching it with some of my friends. I instantly looked at the both of them, and I was like, are they about to do this? Yeah. So I had my fiance Marie. She was sitting next to me on the couch, and she's like, what are you worried about? I was like, they might take Malik Willis here. (laughs) I don't want that. Not for 32 and 34. And then to try to calm myself down, she was like, okay, forget this. She walked out of the room. And I was like, you know what? There's a chance this could be Jamison Williams. And I'd be like, I'm okay with that. I still was, I was still upset about 32 and 34. And then they took Jamison Williams. And then the excitement started coming in. They made a move. A move that the Lions regime has seemingly not done in a long time. Now, the one correlation that I found, they drafted a wide receiver in the first round very early with the last name Williams. They've done that before. Roy Williams, Mike Williams. It's just scary. Just scary to me. Roy was decent for a <laughs> yeah. few years. I know. Um, but just one of those funny things. 
So we don't talk about Mike. We get Alabama wide receiver Jameson Williams, who arguably, without the ACL tear, could be the best wide receiver in the draft. I'm optimistic, but I've talked too much. I'll let you take the floor. What are your thoughts on Jameson Williams and this move? Uh, I'm happy they got aggressive. I'm happy they they made a move to get the best player on the board that fit them immediately. Mm -hmm. I'm a huge fan of the first two picks, honestly, because taking a chance on Kayvon Thibodeau, we both agreed that we that we thought that should have been the thing, right? But I think making a safe pick and then taking a risk, yeah. In retrospect, making the safe pick was a great decision, right? Because they've taken too many chances on guys in the past mm-hmm. on just potential, yeah, and they never live up to it. So getting him first and then dra- and then going up for the guy that, like you said, if not for the injury, would have been the number one receiver in this draft. Mm-hmm. It's uh, it might be the best first two picks the Lions have made in a very long time. Yeah, you could probably stack these up with. I I don't even know who else. Well, Barry Sanders and whoever they drafted in that draft, <laughs> Calvin and whoever they drafted, maybe because those were Hall of Famers. Yeah. After that, these this could end up being the best top two picks they've made. Mm-hmm. Yeah, and. The nice thing, too, is like Jameson Williams, the Lions don't need him right now. He might now, this is the scary part. There's been rumors that he will be ready for training camp, and then there's other people that say he won't be ready till like October or something. I say personally, take your time, make sure he's at 100%. Don't bring him back early because torn ACLs aren't what they used to be. Yeah, he'll most likely be ready to go by the start of the season. Yeah. But if he sat out a few games, I'll see. I wouldn't mind either. Yeah, because this team, they don't have expectations this year still. They're not there yet. They're getting closer, but they're not there yet. So just take your time because this guy could be the next big wide receiver for this team. So I don't want to, like, ruin that chance at all. So I would be very cautious. Um, Then the Lions in the second round because of that. So – I guess one more thing I'll backtrack. The other possibility that people were saying is that the Lions could have taken Jordan Davis. I would have loved that pick if they would have went for Jordan Davis. But going back and now thinking about it, if they would have gotten Jordan Davis at their next pick in the second round, they would have had to try to figure out one of those wide receivers. And that receiver core there, like you could have still gotten George Pickens. Or, no, you couldn't have because he was taken. Oh, yeah, he was taken just after. So, yeah. So, like, George Pickens, Alec Pierce, Tyquan Thornton, Sky Moore. They weren't at the top of my list, let's say. George Pickens, sure. But I felt like if you take Hutchinson, Jordan Davis, I would have at that point wanted to just go all defense. I don't know if I would have liked the receivers enough to use that 46 pick, I guess, in my opinion. So in the second round, they end up taking, unfortunately, David Ajabo went one pick before them to the Ravens. Yeah. We'll talk about the Ravens. Um, That would have been my dream pick, I think. I was really hoping for it. But they ended up going with Josh Paschal, defensive end out of Kentucky. And a lot of people were concerned, okay, you just took two defensive ends with your first three picks. Okay, the Lions were the worst team for rushing the passer. Yes, and they're also not the same type of player. Right. So I don't know what the big gripe was, I guess. Uh, I understand, like, yeah, sure, there's other needs. This team needs second. Yeah, this like they, needs... they could have taken N'Kobe Dean. Yeah, that's a whole that's other story. That's something that could have happened. That's a whole other story, <laughs> yeah. Malik. Um, Talk about droppers, but yeah. Yes. So they go with Josh Paschal, but the more that I keep hearing about this guy – Apparently, he's the real deal. Apparently, he can be a very good player. Uh, sounds like he can be moved around a little bit. Yeah, he's he's almost he's a better inside rusher than outside. Yeah. And he can play the run game pretty well. So, mm-hmm. yeah, he, he could be a nice piece. Yeah. Either next to Aiden or on the other side of the line. Right. So, that's exciting for the Lions in that one. 
And then because of the trades, the Lions did not have a third round pick. Oh no, they had a late, yeah, they, yeah, they late the, third yeah, round. They had the late third. Yes, that ninety seven. So this was where it was kind of sad. This I think this was kind of the sad part of the draft for me personally, because at the top of the third round, um, what was it? Brian Asamoa went to uh, the Vikings, which was the pick that they traded the Lions. So that was a little disappointing for me. I liked Asamoa going into the draft. Um, guys like Christian Harris went before. Um, Nicobe Dean went 83rd overall to to uh, Philadelphia, which was the one that we wanted at like 32 or 34. <laughs> so, yeah, that was crazy. But we ended up getting that secondary. We got Kirby Joseph out of Illinois. Again, I didn't know a ton about him. More that I looked up about him. Seems like he'll be a solid safety for the team. Um, so I can't be sad about it. Um, yeah, and then the rest of the draft... Um, do you have any opinions on the rest of the guys that the Lions picked? Because I, I I don't know uh, the one I, the one I don't like really is James Mitchell. I, okay. I I feel like too big of a risk. That and I I just don't see him fitting really. Like I think it's a good chance he could either end up like third string or like practice squad type guy. He's got some talent, but I don't see him jumping over anybody anytime soon. Could be wrong. Have been before, but I don't really see it. I think Malcolm Rodriguez could be a steal. He okay. was one of the best linebackers in the country. There are some people that had him ranked not far off from the Kobe Dean. And him going in, like some people had him as a third or fourth round type guy. Mm-hmm. And to grab him in the sixth, there are height concerns. He's around like six foot, five eleven. Yeah. But he can take on blocks. He is a tough run defender, he rarely ever misses tackles. And he's decent in coverage, too. Not a great man cover guy, but, yeah, in other coverages, he's pretty good. I like the Malcolm Rodriguez pick. I would say the one thing that's interesting about the Lions draft later on, especially, is it seemed like they went for athletic guys that were slightly undersized, like you're saying. Um, I felt like that was kind of a a thing that was happening and every like review that I was reading of certain players, it was saying little undersized, super athletic. So I don't know if that was just like their idea going into it, that that's what they wanted to do. Um, but yeah. Uh, yeah, they went with, they got two tight ends, didn't they? No, they went after tight end. They've got two linebackers and then a corner. James Houston out of Jackson State. Yep. And then Chase Lucas, who is a, another smaller athletic guy. Okay. So, yeah. Who knows if he'll make the team, but right. he has some talent. Um. Okay. And then Mr. Irrelevant, your boy, Brock Purdy. It disappointed how, his career, disappointed how his career ended. Yeah. He had a great start, but cool for him. Even though it, it it would have been better if he just signed to the team of his choice as a free agent. Yeah. But he could be a career backup in San Francisco. Mm-hmm. That's still pretty good. Yeah. All right. What would you say is your grade for the Lions draft? My grade for the Lions draft, I will give them a A-. minus. Okay. I think the two picks to start are home runs. I think Kirby Joseph could be a starter for them for some years. Mm-hmm. And I think Josh Pascal, I've gone back and forth on him. I like his ability, but I don't know what his – I don't know if his ceiling is very high. I think he could be a very good rotational guy on the line, mm-hmm. a guy that could make some plays, get you like five or six sacks. Yeah. But that that helps. Mm-hmm. So, I like it. I was going to go B+, plus, but since I like the first two picks so much, I love the first two picks. Yeah. I'm going to give him an A-. minus. Yeah. I, I've been kind of back and forth as well. I think I'm going to settle on a B plus and that's just because of maybe unfamiliarity of the later guys. Um, and it's a wait and see. Like I enjoy that they took the risk. I think that's really cool to see from the lions, Yeah, but it's kind of a wait and see kind of deal for me, I guess. So I'm going to give them a B plus. It easily could turn out to be a minus a, 
um, because I am with you. I like the first two picks. There's just some, obviously, there's some risk involved. So kind of a wait and see, but I like it. Um, other than the Lions, who would you say are the biggest winners in the draft for you? So to start, I think the winner overall for what they did in the draft, your Baltimore Ravens, man. I, I, how do they keep getting away with this? I don't know. How? Do, how? Even uh, I, I don't understand. So that's one that we, we'll bring up right now. They traded away Marquise Hollywood Brown to the Arizona yeah. Cardinals. Huge trade that kind of pissed off Lamar Jackson to start. Yeah, and so they got the number 25 pick for that um, from the Cardinals. We did later find out that DeAndre Hopkins is suspended because of PEDs, so that might have been in play. Um, but, yeah, Baltimore ended up getting Kyle Hamilton at 14. Who, some people called it a decent tr- tr- pick at the time. Yeah. But do we agree that it's close to a home run? The fact okay. that Baltimore has him. For them. In his athletic profile. <laughs> well, like I said, they probably have the best secondary in the league if they stay stay healthy. They have Marlon Humphrey, Marcus Williams, Kyle Hamilton, and, uh, wow, why am I blanking? The reason why I kind of anyway. disagreed with you is because I didn't know who the third person was. I mean, the fourth person was in that secondary. I like those other ones, but who is the other guy? It's probably somebody we Yeah, know, I know it yeah. is, but I can't think of. And, of course, my phone is going slow. <laughs> But even after Kyle Hamilton. Well, I know, like, even their their other safety is Chuck Clark. So, yeah, like, their secondary yeah, They have just... so many options. Marcus Peters. For some reason. Marcus Peters. I thought he was on another team for Marcus some reason. Marcus Peters, <laughs> Marcus Williams, Marlon Humphrey, Chuck Clark, Kyle Hamilton. Oh, that, that's, that's, that's stacked. That's absurd. That's ridiculous. That is stacked. But, yeah, then they get that 25th pick, and they get the best center in the draft. A guy that's most likely a starter from the jump, Tyler Linderbaum. Mm -hmm. He'll probably just be there for a long time. Almost like Marshall Yonda, the way he was just a a star in his position for years in Baltimore. Yeah. Then in the second round, you get David Ojabo. Yep. And you pair him with, I forgot the name of the other defensive end there, but they are like really close friends, and they've known each other for a long time. Yeah. You got Mike McDonald coming back from Michigan who coached Ojabo last year. Now, he's the D coordinator in Baltimore. He knows exactly what to do with Ojabo. I have no doubt that he, he'll he get healthy and be just back to being as good as he was and maybe even better. Yeah, and that is like – that's kind of the thing. Like, if you're a good team, you can take the risk on a guy like Ojabo. Like, there are some other teams that they were nervous because, you know, they, they kind of need to hit on some picks. Um the Ravens, they've been a playoff team, so bolstering their defense even more just just helps. Yeah, and if that didn't, if that wasn't enough, you get probably a, a top three defensive line prospect in this draft. Yeah, and Travis Jones from UConn. If people don't know, football players do come from UConn sometimes. Besides <laughs> sometimes. Dan Orvlosky, sometimes Travis Jones is a beast, mm-hmm. and he fell to the fourth, just yeah. into the Ravens' hands. Yeah. It just 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 fell into their hands. They might have <laughs> it's so stupid. It's it's ridiculous. Mm-hmm. He could be a star at nose tackle, defensive tackle. He could be a beast there. Yeah. You you take over the rest. Because they, they just kept cleaning up from there. I mean, I will just say I mean, I will say there is a slight concern for their offense. Yes, the receiver thing is a question. Because now you're you're telling me that Rashad Bateman's gonna step up big time. Obviously, Mark Andrews has been a stud. Um, but where are you going to get that production from the other receivers? That's kind of the the question mark. Here's the thing. You draft Charlie Kolar, best tight end in the draft. Mm-hmm. Some people say he's like a Mark Andrews the second. Really great route runner, knows how to get into open space and make plays, great hands. Yeah. Then you draft Isaiah Likely in the fourth, at the end of the fourth who is a tight end but is more like a hybrid wide receiver. He's like 6'3", 6'4", like 220. But but he's broken off so many big plays when he was in college. Yeah. He is a big play threat at the tight end position. I think they'll line him up outside and, and, and in the slot mm-hmm. a lot. I think they have 
a plan for both of those players. Yeah. And yeah, there there are still concerns, but I think they have a plan. Yeah. And I don't know if Hollywood Brown was becoming a good fit for the offense anymore. No, and I mean, I, I the other thing that I've realized too is that, I mean, I was never a huge Hollywood Brown fan to begin with, but at the same time, like we just saw what the wide receiver market is like. His contract is about to be up. Yeah. So he's going to have to get paid, and he's going to be paid in between, like, the the top guys and Christian Kirk. And Christian Kirk was overpaid. Listen, Arizona brought him there to appease Kyler Murray, mm-hmm. and Kyler Murray is going to make sure that he gets paid and his friend gets paid. Yeah. Yeah. So, yeah, I, I agree. I like the, the Baltimore pick. I felt like it was – they were the kind of the same way where, like, you saw them trade Hollywood Brown, and you're like, huh, they're going to have to do something great after this. And they did. So And they get Tyler Beatty with their last pick. Yeah. All the injuries you have in the running back room, you have a guy that was great for Missouri last year. Yeah. Well, like, and even, like, their fourth-round pick, uh, both their fourth-round – well, they had a bunch of fourth-round picks. Yeah. But um, their first two, I really liked. Daniel Falele. If they can huge, keep him in shape. Huge Minnesota tackle. Yeah. Six um, eight three, almost three fifty. Yeah, he's he's very he's raw, but he's huge. Another guy that you can take a risk on. Well, he's over three fifty. He's like three eighty. <laughs> yeah. yeah. So it, I mean, he's only been playing football for a few years. So another guy you're kind of taking a risk on, but could turn out big. Uh, Jalen Armour Davis. He was kind of a guy that I thought the Lions could look at, cornerback out of Alabama. And I mean, <laughs> I mean they they took a punter at the fourth round, so. Two punters went ahead of Matt Areza, the kid from San Diego State who everybody talked about. Yeah. Weird draft. Just happens sometimes. Yeah. Um, uh, I'll mention the New York teams. They obviously yeah. had great drafts. Go through the Giants first. They got Kayvon Thibodeau, Evan Neal. They're kind of like the Lions where I felt like they did good those first two picks. The others are kind of, kind of swing picks. Londale Robinson, 5'8". Out of Kentucky, kind of small. Yeah, with shifty. with them possibly trading, um, I forgot his name. The receiver they drafted last year, Tony. Yeah, Kadarius with Tony. The, with with Tony apparently wanting out and then wanting him out. Mm-hmm. I think getting Wandell was a good piece to somewhat replace him with. Yeah, um, but they had a lot of draft picks, so they did pretty solid. Filled a lot of their needs, and then the Jets. I mean, they had a monster first round. Uh, Can you believe Jermaine Johnson dropped to twenty six? No. <laughs> <laughs> no. So the Jets got Sauce Gardner, arguably the top cornerback. Garrett Wilson, arguably a top wide receiver. Jermaine Johnson. Top three defensive Basically end. the defensive end that you wanted after Hutch and Trayvon Walker. Yeah. Um, crazy. Then they decided in the second round, which this was kind of a surprise to me, um, but not so much after thinking about it. They went number one running back in the draft, Brees Hall. Yeah. Because they like to play multi-running back systems. And I think it's I, – I really think Michael Carter – I don't think he was destined to be like an every down back. Yeah. I think Brees Hall is more in the mold of what that is mm-hmm. and could be, even though, like, you, they're going to use multiple backs. Yeah. Um. So they they did incredible. They got a lot of top guys at each position. Even Jeremy Ruckert was one of the, the yeah. better tight ends. Really good blocking tight ends. Surprise, say, yeah. yeah. He surprises with his hands mm-hmm. when he gets the chance. Yep. I think – the way the Packers draft started, it looked like it was going to be problems all it, over yeah, again. Yeah, people were real nervous. <laughs> Quay Walker was a crazy reach. Yes. A lot of people don't even think he's the second best linebacker in their in their core. Yeah. But the Packers see something. Mm-hmm. Apparently, they think he's like a perfect fit, and he can get even better in their system. So, it is what it is. They took Quay Walker with 24. Devontae Wyatt, at first, I was confused, but that's a really good pick for them. Yeah. He's a guy that could slide in there mm-hmm. and do really well. And then they start running off some really good picks. Yeah. You trade up and draft Christian Watson, mm-hmm. a guy from North Dakota State with all the athleticism and talent in the world, but just has to show the production. Sean Ryan from UCLA, Steel. He was a starter from day one at UCLA and was consistently really good. He could start for them within a year. Romeo Dubs from Nevada, who was one of the best deep threats in the country, getting passes from Carson Strong, Mm -hmm. who went undrafted, went to the Eagles. Could be a controversy. We'll see. 
And then Zach Tom, another high-level offensive line prospect that they took in the fourth round. Mm -hmm. They did really good. Yeah. After looking like it was going to go bad to start. Yeah, I agree. Um, Another one that I'll mention has to be the Philadelphia Eagles. They moved up to get Jordan Davis. And, granted, it's not really draft news. They end up getting A.J. Brown from yeah. the Titans, uh, which was huge. And they didn't really lose much for it. And they were able to get N'Kobe Dean third round, 19th in the third round, which was the biggest surprise of the draft. Um, so I think Philadelphia did pretty good with their limited amount of picks and what they had. But getting Jalen Hurts, a guy like A.J. Brown, now there's no excuses. So... A.J. Brown, Devontae Smith, I'm excited for this this Eagles team yeah. to see what they're going to do. One last one I want to bring up. Maybe, maybe we could talk about the the quarterback, the rest of the quarterbacks after I bring this up. But Washington, they draft Jahan Dotson in the first round. Mm-hmm. Pretty solid pick. Vidarian Mathis, decent. Brian Robinson, I like it. Percy Butler, we'll see. Fifth round. This is a guy that people, some people thought he would go number one. A lot of people thought it was he was no doubt first round pick yeah. going into the season. Mm-hmm. Things get sketchy as the season goes on. He has all the weight of his shoulders. I mean, all the weight on his shoulders of the UNC football program, and no weapons around him. One good receiver. One. Yeah. yeah. Fifth round pick, Sam Howell to Washington. Mm-hmm. How long is Carson Wentz going to start? I don't. Know. How long do you think he's going to hold this position? Because once those mistakes start coming. Yeah, and Sam Howell is putting pressure on him. That that crowd is going to start chanting for Sam. Yeah, because he's a warrior. And the one thing that Sam Howell is good at is deep passes. And Terry McLaurin has not had a quarterback can, that can throw to him. Listen, Deami Brown was his receiver just a year ago. Yeah, now Washington has him. The Commanders. It's a sneaky one that could work. Yeah, I like that. I didn't really think yeah. of it like that. Before we, end, how did you feel about? They also the, got Brian Robinson. Yeah, I, I, say, I, I like that one. He could take but over. How do you feel about the other quarterback picks? And like we said, how 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 did how did you describe it? How they showed restraint with these quarterbacks. Yeah. How do you feel about this class overall? I mean, I, I think, think it's respectable seeing seeing how they fell. Yeah, I think they ended up going where they could. Um, I love like Carolina taking Matt Corral. Yeah, Matt Corral. He's. One I, of, I thought they were going to go Sam Howell there. Yeah, but Matt Corral. He's kind of one of those guys that he's got more of the upside than some of the other guys, maybe not as safe. Yeah. But they got him in the third round, middle of the third round, and they got Iquanu with their first pick. They didn't reach for a quarterback there. They were able to get another need because if they want to keep Christian McCaffrey healthy and around, they need offensive line. If they need to get if they want a quarterback, they're going to need offensive line. Yeah. So I I'm glad that they they stayed safe. And they didn't go for it. Do you like the Bill Belichick trickery of taking Bailey Zappi in the fourth round? Or is it just meh to you? It, it, to me, it's meh. Okay. Um, I think, I, I don't know. It, it's a weird one because you think like Mac Jones has played pretty good. So you'd think, okay, they don't really need to get a quarterback. But at the same time, like we've seen a lot of, like backup quarterbacks that have had to play in these last few years. Like injury is always a thing. If you don't have a backup quarterback, the Lions, um, you're going to look worse. So to have somebody that you could bring in, like what they did with Garoppolo way back when, like maybe that's what Belichick's thinking. I was literally just going to bring this up. When the Patriots still had Tom Brady, seems like a long time ago, doesn't it? Mm-hmm. It's wild. There was a two-year span where they drafted Jimmy Garoppolo and Jacoby Brissett. I can't remember if, if it was the same draft or if it was two years apart. Mm-hmm. But it was basically, yeah, either that year or, the, or two years apart. Yeah, People were confused. Why would you take Jacoby Brissett after taking Jimmy Garoppolo, who's supposed to be the guy that comes after Brady? Guess what happened? Brady gets hurt. Jimmy Garoppolo balls out for a few games. Trade value goes up. Mm-hmm. Jimmy eventually goes out. Yeah, Jacoby Brissett. He shows flashes in preseason games. 
I think he got a little play in the regular season too. But his trade value goes up. Mm-hmm. You ship him. You either get players or picks back. He also was pretty decent in Indianapolis. We've seen this before. Yeah. Even though it is a stretch taking him in the fourth round, Bill Belichick has done this. He knows exactly what he's doing taking Bailey Zappi. Yeah. They just need to get Brian Hoyer out of there. I, I, it's cool that he's made all this money as the Patriots backup for a long time. Yeah. I wish I could be in the position he was in, honestly. Great position. Mm-hmm. But – I I, I want to see I want to see Bailey Zappi get some preseason snaps. Yeah, and I want to see that result again where the trade value goes up. Who wants Bailey Zappi in two years? <laughs> Who who's up for the Bailey Zappi sweepstakes? Right, that's what I'm ready for. Yeah, um, the only one that uh, for me like, and this isn't even draft because he's invited to mini camp. Caleb Ellaby, he's going to Seattle. Seattle. I think that's a sneaky good one. Because a lot of people expected Seattle to do something in the draft. They never did. I think Kelly Labellaby is one of those guys, and I talked about it before the draft, that he's one of those guys that, like, you could take a flyer on. Maybe he doesn't work out, but I think his upside is just as good as some of these other guys. Yeah. So yeah. I, I like that one. You don't and, even have to use draft capital. For and him. I mentioned for a second, Carson Strong. Mm-hmm. To me, he's I've said he's the best thrower in this draft. Yeah. He can make all the throws high level quarterbacks make. If Jalen Hurts doesn't stay on his game and Carson Strong shows out in the preseason, Carson will have a chance to play. Yeah. And when he plays, I think he will impress and that won't be good for Jalen Hurts and it'll make things much more complicated. Yeah. Which isn't great for which isn't great for Philly, but as a fan of Carson Strong, I would love it. <laughs> but I like Jalen Hurts too. So it's yeah. complicated. Yeah. It's, I it's like Jalen Hurts. Yeah. Um, I want him to improve. All right, we're wow, we're kind of running out of time. We got like oh, man. a little over ten minutes, but yeah. <laughs> before we get to the NBA, okay. I want to go. What is your worst? Who had the worst draft, and maybe what pick it was? Who had the worst? And why draft? was it the Patriots? <laughs> I don't think it was the Patriots. Okay. I don't think it was. I like the the Tyquan Thornton pick. I'm a fan of. Then why was it the Cowboys? Listen, man. I, I some people in like once they finish the draft, we're giving them like B plus grades. I don't think you can give their draft anything above like a C plus at the most. Yeah, that ty- Tyler Smith was the most penalized offensive lineman <coughs> in college football last year. Mm-hmm. They're adding him to the most penalized <laughs> team yeah. in football last year. Mm-hmm. Sam Williams is a reach. Jalen Talbert, solid pick. Mm-hmm. He's very talented. Jake Ferguson could be Dalton Schultz 2.0. Rest of the draft. Yeah. Their offseason has been not not good. There's another – I wanted to say another word, but okay. I'm just going to say not good. I, I, I don't know. I still think New England's trying to be the smartest man in the room. I feel like in, – In a way, yes. I feel like in a way. maybe they're going a little too hard into that, you know, of, of trying to be like, well, we know this guy. He's going to turn into something. When I don't know, they're kind of not in that boat right now. Like they, they're not as dominant as they were. I think they need to be. They need to step back just a little bit, just a little bit. So. Even, even though Miami traded away most of their picks, I think they didn't have a very good draft. With the I like Channing Tindall. Yeah, me too. That could be a good pick. But, but the rest, Eric Ezukama, that's a reach. He's talented. He's he's tall, but that's a reach in the fourth round. Cameron Good out of California. Who knows if he'll ever be productive? Mm-hmm. Skylar Thompson might never play. Yeah. Justin Ross was on the board. He was there. And they took Ezukanma in the fourth. Yeah. That's a that's a big reach. That's a really big reach. Not a fan of what they did. Yeah. Yeah. Teams that teams that built through free agency and are and are gonna make the playoffs, mm-hmm. I can't judge them a ton. Right. Like I I like what the Bills did, kind of, but how many of those guys are gonna make huge Impacts right. outside of Kyer Elam mm-hmm. and Cook. Yeah. 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 Hard to say. Hard to say. Um, okay, let's get to the NBA real quick so that we can actually talk about something. We are in the second round of the playoffs. Um, the Heat are playing the 76ers. Suns are playing the Mavericks. The Grizzlies are playing the Warriors. And the Celtics are playing the Bucks. So far, these series have been... Good. 
I mean, it's only they're only on game two for a couple. So tonight, the Sixers are playing the Heat. Mavericks are playing the Suns. The Miami won game one against the Sixers. Jo- Joel is out. Yeah. I mean, they started DeAndre Jordan, Joey. Mm-hmm. <laughs> they, I know. Did they not learn from the mistakes of Brooklyn? Just yeah. start Paul Reed and bite the bullet. Like let's let's not let's not do this. Yes. And this was on the cusp of Tyler Hero winning six man of the year. Yes, congratulations. Great for him. We kind of expected it. And he played really well in that game too. Yeah. Uh Tobias Harris stepped up for the Sixers. Yeah. Uh James Harden did not. He had a great first half, but that second half, <laughs> more of the disappointment. Yeah. Yeah. And Matt and Maxi did didn't show no. up either. I'm starting to get tired of Danny Green being an NBA player. <laughs> what does he do anymore? He shoots three. Isn't he supposed to be a shooter? Yes. Well, why? He he he, he can't really shoot anymore, Joey. Well, I, I don't understand why he's still in the league. I don't know. Either. It was, <laughs> it's I'm happy you agree. He's still riding along LeBron's coattails, basically. Doc, listen, Doc Rivers has a lot of questions to answer, and he's been given some really bad answers lately. So yeah. we'll see about that. There's a thought that Joel could come back in game three or four, I believe. Um, Will it be too late by then? Yeah. If he doesn't, yeah, I, it's over. Um, and then the Suns beat the Mavericks in game one. Thank goodness Devin Booker came back. So both teams are pretty healthy. The uh, Mavericks are still missing Tim Hardaway Jr., but you know they have Doncic back and all that stuff. So that's it's nice to see that both teams are at full of strength. Um, Cam Thomas had a huge, or Cam Johnson had a huge <laughs> game. My bad. Uh, 17 points off the bench for them. Uh, Aiton, Booker, Chris Paul, they all kind of did their thing. They're so well balanced. Mm-hmm. They're, they're just, so, they're such a good team. Mikhail Bridges has been. He's been, he's been he, real. Yeah. He's been like the foundation of that team. On both ends of the floor. He's yeah. He's the glue guy. He is yeah. the X factor. Keeps the house together. Um, I mean, Doncic, I mean, 45, 45 12, yeah. 8, and, uh, He's doing what he does. His playoff stats are dumb. already all time. Yeah, they're dumb. Yeah, it, they the first half they shot the lights out. Maxi mm-hmm. Kleba hit like four threes in the first half. Yeah, yeah, they're they're gonna need Brunson to step it up once they yeah. get back home and in this game in Phoenix. But I I, I just think Phoenix is too strong yeah. for them to pull. They might Dallas might be able to get two, maybe yeah. at home, but it could be a four one series. Yeah, Phoenix is just so good. Yeah. Um, and then we get to the evenly matched series so far. Both are tied at 1-1. Um, the Celtics just beat the Bucks last night after losing in game one. Kind of looked like the Bucks were going to be able to just handle business. And it looked like, oh, are the Celtics maybe overrated? Um, but they're not. The Celtics came back with a vengeance. Yeah. Uh, Jalen Brown had 30 points. Jason Tatum had 29. Nuclear in the first half. Yeah. He made Grayson Allen fall. He was hitting just contested jumpers. Yeah, it was almost it was over in the first half. Mm-hmm. They went stagnant in the fourth and gave the Bucks an open, but they they it was it was over. Yeah, yeah and they got Tatum a, closed. They down. got a huge game out of Grant Williams, twenty one points off the bench. His defense on Giannis, that that might be something to really look at because he's is making what he, an he impact. He did that to Kevin Durant. Yeah, so maybe Grant, maybe this is Grant Williams' niche. It's that big body, people just can't move him out the way. Mm-hmm. Yeah, um, and then of course without Chris Middleton. The Bucks are missing one of their weapons. They have to consistently get a lot out of Grayson Allen. Yeah, and you or can, just somebody. Yeah. Oh, and since we talked about Danny Green, I'll I'll give us thirty seconds. Can we talk about Wesley Matthews? Hey man, that that he needs to retire the arrow. Like just he, he needs to retire the bow. Listen, I remember him back in like Portland and all this stuff. And he was water. He was making threes constantly. Loved him. Listen, get him out of the league. The, <laughs> They depend on Grayson and Pat to hit those threes now. Yeah. And when they're not hitting, it gets sketchy. Drew Holiday is doing his best, though. Yeah. He's he's hooping. Brooke Lopez is also getting in the, t- in the territory of why are you here. Yeah. Because Bobby Portis is holding down everything Brooke Lopez should be doing. Yeah, Brooke Lopez, six rebounds, two points. Yeah. Good production. He used and to be such a good big. <laughs> he used to be so good. For all the young folks out there, this guy used to average like 27 points a game for the Nets back when he first played. He, People he, forget he that. He was a post <laughs> Monster. He was a post player. Yeah. Now, th- th- this was a weak era of bigs. Yes. There was Dwight Howard, and then there was Andrew Bynum, and then you got to the Roy Hibberts. 
<laughs> but Brooke was young and up and coming, and he was a bucket in Brooklyn. Yeah. Now all he does is chuck threes mm-hmm. and rebound and get the occasional like put back. It's kind of sad. Yeah. He used to have some of the best footwork too as a big man. Now it doesn't look like he can move his feet at all. <laughs> too so slow, <laughs> so slow. Um, and then we get to the kind of the most exciting series I would say is the Warriors and Grizzlies. And Warriors were able to win game one by one point. One point, yeah. It was a great game back and forth. Yeah. Jaron Jackson was unconscious. Yeah, that was crazy. He had, like, one of his best games. He had, like, what, 36? Six I think he had 36 points. Uh, 30, so let me see. 33, thought, 36? Uh, Jaron Jackson had 30, wait, 33. Yeah, 33. Okay, so it was 33. Um, yeah, incredible. And Ja also had 30 in that game. Jordan Poole also had 30 in that game. Um, just crazy. So much scoring and so much excitement. But in game two last night, the Warriors made their run again, kind of got to the lead, and then the Grizzlies, well, John Morant closed out the game. He's, he's taking, by himself. He's taking those steps to be a superstar. He has. He's, do, he's, he's doing it. Everybody knows how crazy athletic he is. But the way that he is able to balance and redirect his body in the air is possibly it's, it's second to none. Two feet from the dotted line, curve around somebody with the left leg. And what's what's even crazier, in that first series, he was not very good on offense. Mm-hmm. But for him to maintain almost like nine assists, nine rebounds, and still play hard on defense, this yeah. kid is, he's just a dog. Yeah, He's just a flat-out dog. And he had the three-pointer going last night. Yes. He's, he was on. 47, 8, and 8. Incredible game. The unfortunate part is they only won by 5. Klay Thompson was off. Steph Curry was off for most of the game. And, I mean, even Jordan Poole was somewhat off. Like, the Warriors were just off, and they only lost by 5. They they needed every bit of the 47. I think he scored 15 straight in the 4th. Yeah. He had had 18 in In the the 4th, and, yeah, it was probably like 15 or so. But... Just to keep this theme going, because it's hilarious. Early candidate for why are you in the NBA? Otto Porter Jr. Dylan Brooks. <laughs> Otto Porter listen, Jr. Son, <laughs> listen, Dylan. I liked you out of Oregon. I like your aggressiveness your first few years. I liked you last year. Mm-hmm. But listen, 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 listen. Des- Desmond Bain, he he needs to get those step back threes you're taking. And you trying to be Kobe Bryant and T-Mac all rolled up into one. These days are over, son. <laughs> Slow-mo Kyle Anderson is coming in and playing much better than you are. Mm-hmm. DeAnthony Melton is coming in and playing much better than you are. They're giving Conchar minutes in the playoffs now. Yeah. Because Dylan Brooks is just doing too much. I literally was watching the game um, the other night, and this was game one. <laughs> and my dad and my brother were sitting there, and they're like, who's this guy? I was like, is that my boy Conchar? Because I knew because it was Purdue Fort Wayne, what, man. 51 or whatever his number 40, is. 46. 46. One of the grossest NBA yeah, numbers exactly. there is. I knew it was just a weird number. But let's, Zaire Williams is 19. Yeah. He hit four threes and scored 14 points. Mm-hmm. What is the purpose for Dylan Brooks? Yeah. But listen, next year, trade Dylan. Just start Zaire because he's hitting those corner threes. He's playing hard on defense, and he catches lobs. Yeah. What does Dylan do besides try to be – uh, everybody, <laughs> he's trying to be every superstar in history rolled up in one. Yeah. Well, we'll have to see on next week's episode when uh, these series could be close to over, um, possibly over, depending on how they go. So we'll see. Uh, we'll give you a great Dylan Brooks update next week. Um, it's crazy that the NFL season is basically beginning back up again, even though it's just the summer. Um yeah, there's some craziness in college football news. There's news all over the place. Yeah, so we'll have to start doing news and notes kind of bits, and then we'll update the playoffs more um, in depth. And like we said before, maybe we'll talk a little baseball. We were going to because we thought the Tigers were going to be good. Listen, that's not turning out listen. so great. <laughs> we we oh, we got we got to we got to mention this mess yeah. next week. All right, this has been Vs from the sidelines. We'll see you guys next time. Who's your favorite player in these playoffs? So far. I think it has to be John. Would Dylan Brooks be ranked last in terms of playoff players so far? He wouldn't be ranked last. He had a few good games. Uh, so. But son, please stop. 
please. 